Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Yes, he is. He's wonderful. And he, he just he's just so good you don't you can't describe him. But what I like is the, the love that he shows you. And just the, the you know, you, you can actually feel it to me, I feel you know, I can feel the love of God in, in times that are really just make you want to cry, you know what I mean? So, blessed Father, we just thank you for this evening. Lord, we come to you thanking you for your blessings and thanking you for your praise. And thanking you for your, the power that you have over us and watching us and keeping us, Lord. And Lord, we're going to give you honor tonight, Father. We're going to lift lift your word up and, Father, just give you give you all the goodness that we can pour out to you, Father. Because you are able in all things, and Lord, we just want you to enjoy the praise that we have tonight for you. Father, we ask that any, any one of us that are in need tonight, Father, that you would just grant that, Father. You would give what is, what is needed to them, the ones that are trying to make it here, or, or if they have a problem in their, in their family lives, Lord, we just ask you to bless right now, Father. We touch, ask you to touch the ones that are sick in their bodies, Father, so that they may be a mighty testimony to, to your name, Father. And Lord, we're just going to just say how much we love you and how much we need you in all these things. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We might be few, but we're mighty in power. I love the Lord, brother. I love the Lord so much. I was watching, I was watching the World Series last night. I was watching the World Series last night, and the announcer kept saying at the end of the game, how awesome, how great, how glorious, unbelievable. And I thought to myself, if only people would talk that way about Jesus. Amen. They have no problem going to a game and screaming at the top of their lungs for root for their team. Why can't they scream at the top of their lungs for Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Danielle. This one stay on all the time? Nope. Turn this one on. The one I just took from the uh, piano. This one, there, it's on now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's on now. You can turn it down a little bit. There you go. All what right. You first? Let's do the uh, spirit of the Lord.
Jesus. Amen. And be excited. If you can stand in front of the TV and shout for your favorite team, why can't you shout for Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing now, brother? You lead us until whatever song you want to time these songs brother wow <coughs> now what are you doing any of the songs I want to do glad you said that brother everybody come to the front you're right up here in the front <coughs> this called this song I like slow songs a lot these this songs Lord you are you probably you should know this
Thou art worthy, mighty God. Thou art worthy, Abba Father. Thou art worthy, Lamb. just want to praise you, Lord. I want to lift my hands. I just want to say I love you. You are everything to me. And I exalt your Lift your hands up and worship the Lord for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Just worship God just for a second. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord. More precious Thank you, mighty God. Jesus. I know you guys don't know some of these songs, but that's okay. Just close your eyes and lift your hands up and listen to the song. Just listen to it. Great is the Lord. His name alone is excellence. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord. His name 
close everybody worship for a minute Thank say Lord we love you that's a very simple song say Lord we love you Lord, we now love I want you, you to say this with me say when I look into your holiness when I gaze into your loveliness when all things that surround me become shadows in the light I worship the chords are not right on this song. Can't do it, brother. You got another one? Yeah. <clears throat> what you got, brother? Yep, go ahead, take it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Guys, <clears throat> that's enough of the singing. My fingers are gone.
I heard a whistle on a train. Can you hear the whistle on the train? How's that start? Can you hear the whistle on the train? That's it. Will this... Now I want you to listen to words, guys. Everybody lift your hands up and listen to words. Everybody listen to words. Well, this train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory. If you want to go to heaven, you got to live holy, this train. Oh, 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 oh. This train don't carry no dopers, this train. This train. For smokers, this train, whoa, whoa, this train, this train don't carry no hippies, this train, this train don't carry no hippies, this train, this train don't carry no hippies, these that carry any whiskey, yeah, this train, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I went upon the mountain, and the Lord, he spoke. And out of his mouth, praise God, came fire and smoke. Oh, Lord, every time I feel the Spirit, Lord, moving, I can't remember that song. That's it. <laughs> Man, I ain't done this in 25 years. <laughs> One and two in the morning. Never take a break. Never. I had so much energy. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it sure was, man. But you still had to have energy to do it. If you, what happens is if the power of God comes and you, you don't have the energy to do it, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. <coughs> Get away, bro. Uh, here's what I want to do real quick. Everybody grab hands just for a second. Now, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but tonight in prayer, it doesn't matter. <coughs> I want you to pray for the election and pray that God put in the house whom he wants in the house. Go ahead. Or however you want to pray, it didn't matter to me.
Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord, mighty God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.3. 3. Could you put that in the Amplified, please? <clears throat> Amplified Bible. Take you one of them off of my desk. Give me a yellow marker. Boy, the way that hits you when it first comes up there. <clears throat> well, you're still unspiritual. He was talking to somebody, right? <clears throat> For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there are envying, <coughs> say envying, <coughs> jealousy. <coughs> King James, I think it says right there, it says strife. Go ahead, take it from the top, Jackie. For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh under the control of ordinary impulses. That's that rascal we're going to beat up, right? <clears throat> For as long as there are envying and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh, behaving yourselves after a human standard and like mere unchanged men? Romans 12, 2. <clears throat> Romans 12. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to, it, to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. I like the top of that. <clears throat> Do you not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after, adapted to its external. And there's another part I like. Uh, right here, and uh, but be you transformed by the renewing of your minds, the King James says, but be changed by the entire renewing of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude, <clears throat> by its new ideas and its new attitude. So we need a mind change, right? <clears throat> Everybody in the room needs a mind change. Say, I need a mind change. <clears throat> Absolutely. James 1, 5 through 8. Would you read that to me, please? Because we don't want to think like the world, right? <clears throat> If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding and it will be given him. Only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. 
For the one who wavers, hesitates, and doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed oh, by the yeah, wind. She's reading through this. Remember, she's talking about the renewed mind. We're renewing our minds. So start up at that verse again, please. Only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts, is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly, let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. Verse 8. For being as he is, a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute, he is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. And that's why you see it. That's why sometimes you see a whole uh, congregation or even a whole nation that's unstable because they have a double mind. <clears throat> a double mind, well, you can't operate in a double mind. It's impossible. You, you go one way or the other. <clears throat> So we're talking about a double-minded or changing our minds so we're not, we're not like the world or thinking like the world. So in these scriptures in James 1 through 5, he says, if you have a double mind, you can ask me nothing because it's not going to work. He says, but if you have a single mind, you can ask whatever you will and I'll do it for you. So I want to go to 2 Corinthians, stay in the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, and we're going to look at something. <clears throat> for we walk by faith. And somebody says, yes, we do. <clears throat> Right, yes, we do. We regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction or by belief. Our, <clears throat> our conviction. And most of the church probably doesn't have much of a conviction. <clears throat> or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with trust and holy fervor. Thus we walk not by sight or appearance. Or appearances. So the flip side of that would be a, a mind that is not controlled by God but would be controlled by the senses. I'm controlled by senses. What I hear, you flip your TV on and watch people, what they hear, they respond to. If you attack, they attack. <clears throat> so you can, you can see how people operate. And we're not supposed to operate like that. Say we're not supposed to operate like that. We're not supposed to operate like Never that. Never on the attack. Blessed are the peacemakers. Right? <clears throat> So to have the right relationship with God, he's a divine God, he's a trustworthy God, and he's, we're supposed to walk around in holy uh, fervor or fire, and not by a worldly appearance, and not by believing God. You have to believe God constantly. Look at your neighbor and say, I have to believe God constantly. <clears throat> no matter what the world says, I have to believe God. Now, I want you to say this back with me, because... If we can get this in our heads and start thinking this way, victory is ours. Say victory is ours. Victory <clears throat> okay. Is ours. Say man. Yeah. And then I want you to say your name. Mark. Jackie. Was created. Follow me. Say created. created. In God's. In God's. God's, God's class. class. He had to put you in his class. Or he couldn't have fellowship with you. Say class. class. Now I'm not talking about his, all his divineness. I'm talking about in his class because... If you were a dog, you couldn't have fellowship with him. If you weren't a being that was spiritual, and we are spiritual, you couldn't relate to him. He couldn't relate to you. It, 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 you wouldn't be able to sit and debate with him. You can debate. It says in, it says in the Old Testament, yeah. come and debate with me. Come and talk to me. Let's talk it over. Let's work it out. So with a, with a word-ruled mind, or what God says, and leave it at that, nothing else, it's the beginning of our minds being renewed. And he said, matter of fact, he said, the beginning of wisdom is what? Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. <clears throat> That's the beginning of it. What does that mean? The beginning of wisdom or knowledge is the fear of the Lord. What does that mean? Be the fear of God, the beginning of it. That's the very beginning of it, is to fear God. Fear God because he's going to kill you? Fear God because of... Why would you fear God? Fear him in the sense, I don't know with a reverence right? right that's the first thing you do when you get saved you begin to reverence God if you got saved so it says in Romans 8 13 we're gonna read that keep it in the um, amplified Romans 8 13 <clears throat> for if you 
according to the dictates of the flesh. Remember, you dictate. Say dictate. dictate. Say again. Dictate. This could be a dictate. Getting even. Say getting even. Get Absolutely. According to the dictates of the flesh. Sure it would. They do me wrong. I'm going to get them back. You will show. I don't know, do, we ever, do you ever get past thinking that way? Is, is there anyone in the room that's like that? I am. But you got you to catch hold of it and say, no, I'm not going to get even. <clears throat> no, Jackie. You will surely die. But you'll if die. What does that mean you'll die? You're going to die in your tracks because you're thinking this way? According to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die? Remember, he's talking about, he's not talking about a physical death. He's talking about a spiritual death. Anytime you raise your hand against a brother, that's why your, their, your minds have to be right. Go. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, honey, you got to scoot over, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. You're going to live forever, really, truly. Say really, truly. Uh, Proverbs 20, 25, 28. Proverbs 25, 28. He who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. And what does that mean? Go to the top and read it again. <clears throat> he who has no rule over his own spirit. If you can't control yourself, it'd be like, if you can't control yourself, it's like the, a city without walls. There's no walls, so everything comes in on you. Everything attacks. Does anybody have problems? controlling their spirit. Somebody say, I do sometimes. <clears throat> sure you do. But your mind, when your mind's renewed, it catches it and it stops you. So what we're after is we're after, say this with me, God's thoughts. God's thoughts. God's thoughts. God's thoughts. His, nature. his nature. And not just his nature, but his ways. His ways. And we, people quote this all the time. We have the mind of Christ. Let's see what that means, the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16. We may back up. I don't know yet. 1 Corinthians 2.16. For who has Stop. known... Go back up to 15. But the spiritual... Go back up to 14. Go back to 13. <clears throat> Take it from there. And we are setting these truths forth in words not taught by human wisdom... But taught by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truth with spiritual language. And those two go together. Spiritual truth and spiritual language go together. To those who possess the Holy Somebody Spirit. Somebody say, I possess him. Everybody wants to possess that guy. <clears throat> go, next one. But the natural, non-spiritual man. This is a natural man. He's just natural. He's saved. He got saved. He's just kind of still natural. Just kind of, just kind of natural and just kind of, you can offend him very easy. Anybody know anybody gets offended easy? Sure you do. They're saved, they get offended easy, they get vindictive. They're just kind of, you just got to kind of pamper them and, you know what I mean? Just kind of pamper them and just kind of lead them a little bit. And So they're non-spiritual. They're just not... You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think everybody's called to be spiritual. I really don't. Because if you don't have some people that are a little bit natural, nothing gets done. Isn't that right? Well, sure, nothing would get done. If you have one that's always spiritual and he does nothing, but well, not much gets done. Take it, Jay. <clears throat> but the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts. Say into his heart. That's where it's at. Say into his heart. Into his heart. Into his heart. The gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are folly. Meaningless nonsense to him. Say meaningless. They don't make sense. Why do I have to. Why would I pray and ask God for anything? Well it didn't make sense to him. And, he, and he is incapable of knowing them. Of progressively recognizing. Understanding. That's it. It's recognizing. And becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. And appreciated. How many of you guys appreciate the gifts of the Spirit of God? Say, I do. <clears throat> Everybody in the room, I'm sure we all do. We all appreciate those. I don't know if we're going to all walk in them, but we all appreciate them. 
We know when they're operating, don't we? Sure you do. So he says in scripture, he says, you're either going to be ruled by one thing or the other. God's word or impulses. Say God's word. God's ruled word. by. Ruled. Ruled. Some people don't like that word. Ruled by ordinary impulses. So you got two things working here. You got, I'm going to walk in God's word and that's what's going to rule me. That's what's going to guide me. Or will my impulses lead me? I went over to my sister's house. She's not here. This is a powerful spirit. I went over to my sister. No, no. How did we got connected with Grendel some way? I don't remember how it was now. And she told us, she said, you know, her husband died, so she's at her house. And she said she went over to visit my mother, and she said, and my mom walk, walks in the spirit of fear. She just has it on her. I mean, it's never left. It's, it's always been there. So my sister Grendel, she went over to visit her, and she kept saying to her, do you look under your bed at night? Do you check your closets? Well, she, she said it took three days to get that off her so she could stay by herself. So impulses, uh, fears, you know, you either gonna, we either as a church, you're going to walk by faith or you're going to walk by fear. That's the choices. Say faith. Faith is believing what somebody said, and that's what we're doing is believing what he said. Or fear, constantly walking in fear, believing nothing that anybody said. Right? So we're either going to walk in uh, faith or fear, we're going to walk in power or weakness. Tell that to your neighbor. Say faith or fear. Say, it's your choice. It's your choice. Power or weakness. Now, how do you get rid of, the, how do you get rid of weakness? You can, you can pray. You can believe God. And sometimes it just stays there. But you can get a scripture and, and put it out of you. The scripture says, here's what the scripture says. It says to, to not just listen to it or see it. But we have to become what it is. Until we become what the word says, it's not going to work. Lift your hands up for a minute. Say this with me. Say, Father, until I become what the word of God says I am, pound that inside me. Study it. Meditate it. Eat it. Stay in it. Live in it. Accept it as truth. No matter what my physical being says, accept it as truth. It has power over my being. It has power over my body. Eat it. Live in it. Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. Would you read that? Rooted, grounded in God. Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. My son. Tell your neighbor, say, rooted and grounded in God. Rooted and grounded. Okay, go. My son, forget not my law or teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. So he's saying to him, he says, son, he's talking to us, son, son, forget not my law or my teachings. Do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. Let your heart keep them too. Verse, yeah, there you go. For length of days and years. Somebody say, I want as many days as I can get. I want as many days so, okay, so what, what lengthens the days here? The word. Louder. The word. Keeping it where? In your heart. In your heart. So he says if you'll do that, you'll have long life, many years, worth, say worth, worth. Living. living. Worth living. Say worth living. Worth living. Worth living. Go. And tranquility inward. Or peace inward and outward. And continuing through old age till death. These shall they add to you. Keep going. Through eight. Let not mercy and kindness, shutting out all Grab hatred. Grab that mercy and kindness, guys. Say, I'm not going to let it go. I'm Say, I'm going to hang on to mercy and kindness. I'm going to have mercy for people. And I'm going to have the spirit of kindness upon me. Go. Shutting out all hatred and selfishness. Shutting it out. So it must, have, it must be there. So shutting it out so that it doesn't exist. Go. And truth, shutting out all deliberate hypocrisy or falsehood, forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the tablet of your heart. Of your heart. How do you write them? How would you write scripture in your heart? Meditate. Meditate it. 
meditate. To get a scripture, you should meditate it. Works good for me is I write scriptures out and I meditate it. One small scripture, I write it, meditate it, think about it, pour it in me in hopes that I can just quote it. <clears throat> More than just one. I mean, people can, you can, yeah. You don't, you don't know the effect of that quoting scripture until you've been in the presence of somebody that quotes the New Testament to you. We went to a tent revival, uh, Hagen. Jim Lone taught me into going down there. We went down to Detroit and this was in the early 70s or maybe late 70s. This guy stands up in a tent meeting. I wouldn't even save them. And he quotes the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation all the way through it. I'm telling you, brother, the power of God fell in the whole tent. Everybody was slain under the power of God. It was unbelievable. It was unreal. And you know, when he died at 80-some years old, he just put his head down and died. Right at the dinner table. <clears throat> Go. I read, okay. Oh. So shall you find favor. Favor? Say favor. favor. Say favor. favor. So he says, you'll find favor if you'll do what I said in verse 1. You're going to find favor. Say favor. favor. How many of you guys want favor with men? Absolutely we do. <clears throat> Good. Good understand. How many of you guys want to be understood? I, want, I don't like being misunderstood, do you? People, you'll say something to someone and because they don't understand what you're saying, they twist it and they don't understand what you're saying to them. So then they run off and they say something you never even said. <clears throat> Go. And high esteem in the sight or judgment of God and man. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your See, there's heart. A confident thing, man. You know how you were when you first got saved, all that confidence you had? Anybody do any testifying when you first got saved? Anybody lead anybody to the Lord? That's a confidence. There, there was this thing that came inside you and you are so confident in God. But because we don't stay and we don't meditate and meditate, the confidence just kind of goes, zoom. Can you build it back up? Absolutely you can. <clears throat> Go. And be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or Lord, understanding. We don't want to. Lord, Lord, I do not want to... Uh, rely upon my own insight and my own understanding. Just because someone has a, a 4.0 grade and they're, they're brilliant don't mean that they can quote this and have any effect to it. Right. That's, that's a true statement. Uh, Buck Williams, his, um, his grandfather could not read one word. He picked up a newspaper and couldn't even read it. He picked the Bible up and just blast right through it. God given. He, he, from birth, he, I mean, he just couldn't read, never learned to read. Go. <clears throat> Six. In all your ways, know, recognize. All. Say all. all. All my ways, I have to acknowledge God. Everything that I do, I have to acknowledge God. And not in silliness. All my ways, I must acknowledge you, Lord, Father God. In everything that I do, I want to acknowledge you. I want to get your thought on it. I want to get your mind up before I make a big mistake. Amen. <clears throat> Amen, right. Go. And he will direct and make straight if and plain. If you get plain. his mind, he'll direct you. He'll make straight your path. He'll make straight your path. He'll direct you. He'll lead you. Is that the last verse? No. He said through eight. Through eight, go. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. Now you young people may not need this verse because your nerves aren't shot yet from all the world garbage. But he says, I'll even make your nerves healthy. Somebody say amen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, Jacqueline, I need you to go to Proverbs with me, chapter 6. Well, we're staying in Proverbs. 6, 20 through 24. And let's pick this apart and look at it. <clears throat> my son, keep your father's... There he goes with my son again. Say my son. <clears throat> Go. Keep your father's God-given commandment and forsake not the law of God your mother taught you. If she did. Bind them continually upon your heart and tie them about your neck. There's that heart and that neck thing again. When you go, they, the words of your parents, God, shall lead you. When you sleep, they shall keep you. And when you waken, they shall talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the whole teaching... Go back to, go back to 2 and 22. 
when you Ponder go. Ponder that a minute, you guys. Think about that just for a second. The words of your parents. God shall lead you when you sleep. Lead you when you sleep. They shall keep when you, you when you're waking. And they shall talk to you. Or talk with you. Wow. Go, oh, 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the whole teaching of the law is light, and reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Discipline. Discipline. Everybody wants to do what they want to do. Everybody wants to go their own way and do what they want to do. No discipline at all. None. No discipline. 24. To keep you from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a loose woman. First uh, John 3.23. And this is his order, his command, his injunction, that we should believe in, put our faith and trust in, and adhere to and rely on, the name of his son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And, and that we do. should love one another just as he has commanded us. See, it's all in that. So he says, here's what he's saying. In Proverbs, she read to you in chapter 3. She read, let your heart keep my commands. Let your heart keep what I have said. Then he says, in Proverbs and in Romans, she read to you. Don't be carnal minded. It's death. Be spiritual minded. It's life and peace. It's life and peace. Enjoying the Holy Spirit. Success is directly connected to Proverbs 3.3. 3. Success in life is directed to the root, the Word of God that you have planted inside you. No root, no, re no, exult, no results. If nothing's rooted inside you or down inside you, you we're not going to succeed the way we want to succeed. We want to be succeeding with God. <clears throat> And the root being the command. Say the command. Say the root I'm putting in my heart is the command from God. 1 John 2.5. 1 John 2.5. But he who keeps treasures his word, who bears in mind his precepts, who observes in its entirety, truly in him has the love of and for God been perfected completed, reached maturity. By this we may perceive, know, recognize, and be sure that we are in him. That's success. When we reach maturity, that is success. Isn't it? <clears throat> sure it is. That's, that's a God kind of success. Might not be the world's answer to success, but it's God's answer to it. And when you succeed with God, you're going to succeed in the world. Right? <clears throat> So now we're looking at the whole picture. We don't want to be a natural. We don't want to stay in the natural realm. We're renewing our minds to what God says. So the word of God says in the book of Hebrews. Seize inside of our hearts. And it's up to what we do with it. That allows God to change what needs to be changed. What do we do? We accept it. Say I accept your correction. I accept your direction. I accept your purpose and your will. So the word of God. Seize the heart. Looks inside of our heart and it changes. I want to change, don't you guys? So he says, and you do these things. If you do Proverbs 3, 6, John chapter 3, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, I'm going to pull all the religious stuff out. Say all the religious stuff. The things that I think it should be this way. <clears throat> and I'm going to make you whole. I'm going to press out and burst forth all the stuff that's inside you that's not right. And I'm going to bring forth the blessing that you will not be able to hold. Uh, Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. <clears throat> Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors and with the first fruits of all your income. In verse 10. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vat shall be overflowing with new wine. Proverbs 3. I need to go back to Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 for a second. And then we're going to do verses 8, 9, and 10. 
Lean Three. on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make straight the plain and, and plain seven. your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. And then here's the results. 8, 9, and 10. Read it to them. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors and with the first fruits of all your income. And then verse 10. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty, and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. Two categories, the wise and the foolish. Say wise, wise. And, foolish. and foolish. Foolish people despise the wisdom and instruction of God. Let me say it again. Foolish people despise the wisdom and instruction of God. Proverbs 1, 7, read that to me. <clears throat> the reverend and worshipful worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning and the principle and choice part of knowledge its starting point and its essence but fools despise skillful and godly wisdom instruction and discipline now I want you to admit this to me everyone in the room I want you to say this much Pastor Mark we've done everything we've tried everything with no results and then I'm going to say to you listen no, you haven't tried everything. It says once you've tried everything, Ephesians 6.10, then finally stand. Say stand. Say I've tried everything. And now stand. Ephesians 6.10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Be empowered through, suck that in for a minute. Be empowered, be driven, be empowered by your union, union with God. Draw your strength from Him. Say that with me. Say, Father, I'm drawing my strength from you. Father, I draw my strength from you. Say it again. I'm drawing my strength from you. So you gotta make him first place. Say I gotta make him first place. <clears throat> Say it again, I gotta make you gotta be driven. It has to drive you. Say, it has to drive me. <clears throat> Danny, <clears throat> it's Sunday morning. I want you to listen to me for a minute. It's Sunday morning. You, what time do you get here? Okay, this is a driven person that is driving and they're being empowered by God. Say, empowered. <clears throat> so I I'm, I'm just want to use you for a minute. Danny's driving up the road. He's coming up I-75. He stops to get a drink. He's got 15 minutes to get it before he gets here. He sees a guy out in the road that he knows. He knows this guy. The guy says, Danny, come here, man. I need to talk to you. I got to tell you something important. It's only going to take about a half hour. Danny's reply, when you're driven by God, driven, say driven, would be, uh-uh. I'm on a mission. I'm going somewhere. I'm driven. That's putting God first. Instead of stopping to see what this guy, the silliness this guy wants, he's driven to go do what he's doing. Say driven. driven. Say we need to be driven. Say it again. We need to be driven or empowered through our union with God so nothing stops us. Say so nothing stops us. So Ephesians 6.10. Read them. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with him, draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. So he says, now, you've done everything, you've stood. He says, finally stand. It says in the King James, finally, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and power his might. And then it says, stand when you've done all to do, stand. So we've done all we can do. We've listened to this, we're renewing our mind. So what do we got to do next? Look at your neighbor and say, learn more. Carry more. Learn more. Act out God's word more. Stay connected with God more. Stay in his presence more.
stay in prayer more. Stand up, lift your hands up. Everybody in the room, stand up, lift your hands up. Say, say, stay in prayer more. Say, stay in fasting more. Stay connected with God more. So I'm driven. See, the church is not driven. It's not empowered. It doesn't show its empowerment. We're late. We're um, lackadaisical. We're, uh, yeah, that's, put that on the burn of the whole, that's the way the world is. That's the way the world is. Say, that's the way the world is. That's the way the world is. So empowered. Say, I must be empowered by God. If you're empowered by God in this last hour, you're going to reap the harvest. You're going to reap the harvest. If you're empowered by God, you're going to catch the direction. Say, I'm going to catch the direction of the Spirit. Being powered, empowered by God. Somebody make that state with me. Say, nothing can stop me when I'm empowered by the Spirit to do the work that God has called me to do. I'm empowered, driven by it. Say, driven by it. Driven. And we're going to make it the best we can make it. All right, have a seat. Galatians 6, 7. Would you read that to him? Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or professions or by his precepts being set aside. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. Oh. <clears throat> For what Read that part again. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. For whatever... Driven. Remember, driven, you can have a deluded God. You don't want to be deluded. He will delude himself. But I'm telling you, empowered by God. If we're going to be empowered by God, we can't let anything stop the direction. Say, stop it. Nothing can stop it. <clears throat> Amen. Go. For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. Say it again. That last part. <clears throat> For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will and reap. say, God will not be mocked. You put your energy in God, he'll put his energy in you. Say it to me again. Say, if I put my energy in God, <clears throat> he'll put his energy in me. That's what he's saying here. I'll put my energy in you. You'll have it if you put your energy in me. Colossians 2.7. We're going to end probably in a minute. Colossians 2.7. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Have the roots of your being firmly and deeply planted in him, fixed and founded in him, being continually built up in him, becoming increasingly more confirmed and established in the faith. More confirmed. You're not more confirmed by man. Confirmed as you come up, we lay our hands on you, we confirm you into the ministry. You're confirmed by God. God does it. Amen? Sure he does. Absolutely he'll confirm you. You don't have to ask for someone to confirm you. Although that's the way the church does it. The church calls people up and they say, okay, we're going to confirm you into this and this and whatever the call is on your life. But when God confirms you, that's what they see. You've been confirmed God by God and they recognize it and then they do it. But if you're not crowned and settled, God, you'll ne we'll never be confirmed. Will we? Established in the faith? Just as you were taught and abounding and overflowing in it with thanksgiving. Overflowing in it. Say overflowing in it. Say overflowing in it. Say I'm going to chase out what has not been overflowing. God wants to overflow. You, you know why it's so important for him to overflow? Because it gets rid of all the garbage. Say overflowed. Say it again. Say overflowed. So Ephesians says this in 317. Rooted, rooted, rooted. Rooted. Unmovable. I got this tree in my backyard. This thing's this big around. Huge. Huge tree. The other day I was walking out around it. We got a sandy ground. I'm walking out around it and I look down. Here's this root. It's this big around. And it's halfway out of the ground. That's the root to this tree. No matter how sandy it is, no matter how it hasn't rained, that root still goes down and it's sticking up in the sunshine and that tree is still glorious. Say rooted. Say it again. Rooted, 
grounded and settled in him. Ephesians says built up in him beyond our, our imagination. Established in the faith. Taught by God. Established, rooted, built, walking in faith with thanksgiving. Say thanksgiving. When was the last time you thanked God that he brought you through what he just brought you through the last 30 days? When was the last time you did that? Ask your neighbor. Okay, guys. Ponder that for a while. Well, guys, I had fun with your name. <clears throat> Those are some ancient songs we sang. <clears throat> you guys, let's just sit there and pray for a minute. <clears throat> just pray for another minute for the election. That's right around the corner, man. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. You're so mighty, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Glorious in majesty. <clears throat> Great is the Lord. <clears throat> and greatly to be praised. <clears throat> and greatly to be praised. <clears throat> Father, we thank you, Lord God. We know that you're going <clears> to <throat> move on our nation's behalf, Lord Father. <clears throat> you're hearing the cries of the saints. <clears throat> I know you are. And if you're not hearing the cries of the saints, something's wrong. Not with you, with us. <clears throat> we ain't crying hard, loud enough. Father, we just ask that your hand, Lord, Father God, be upon our nation. Be upon the body, Lord, Father God. <clears throat> and just direct us and lead us, Lord, Father. Whew. And we want to be established in you. No matter what happens, Lord, Father, in the last hour, we have to be established. Nothing can waver us. <clears throat> Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, my name. Thank you, Father God. Amen. How many of you guys have heard of Smith Wigglesworth? <clears throat> I, I got a little small book on him. <clears throat> the guy that wrote the book asked him. He, he was around him. He said, can you give me the, the, your success? What, I mean, what do you do to be so successful in God? And this guy raised three people from the dead. <clears throat> and all kinds of stuff and he pondered it for a minute he told him he said I don't go 10 minutes in one day now, I want you to think about this I don't go 10 minutes in one day without praying I don't go 10 minutes in one day without picking scripture up and reading it when I sit down at the table to eat I read scripture before we eat when I get up in the morning it's the first thing I do is open the Bible and read scripture when I'm sleeping at night that's what I do I wake up all night long and read scripture <clears throat> powerful man of God so the power's there <clears throat> amen yeah alright guys love you man had fun <clears throat>